<laughs> I'm already <laughs> Thanks, Tim. <laughs> hey, Ike, how are you? I am good. I'm so glad we're back again. Yes, I agree. Back from Baltimore. Yes, yes. And we got some great stuff going on. We have some stuff from Baltimore we're going to share later. And yeah. we got another um, old little uh, segment that we used to do back in the day. We're bringing back to life again. But yes. um, today's show is sponsored by Uberlube, uberlube.com. You can get all their products on there, travel size products, glass bottles. They're all nightstand friendly. Check out their site, get their products. They are amazing. And we love that they support us on our tour with Fifty Shades of Gay. Yes, we love Uberlube. And Loose Lips has been picked up by Ripped TV. You can check out myrippedtv.live and our shows will air every Wednesday after they air here on Saturday on yes. video. So now also, if anybody out there needs any advice from Ike or Tim, you can send uh, send your questions to our Facebook page by DMing facebook.com slash loose lips the podcast or Ikevelli events at hotmail.com. So while Tim and I were on the road for the Fifty Shades of Gay tour, we decided while we're doing a show in Baltimore, Maryland, that we were going to bring back our favorite segment, What the Hell Did I Just Put in My Mouth? We hit about three to four hot spots, sampled lots of food and desserts. And tonight, we're going to bring you part one in the series. Hey, hi. Uh, welcome to What the Hell Did I Just Put in My Mouth? Um, we're in Baltimore, Ike Abelli and Tim Moss, at Luna Del Sea. Yes, it's on 300 West Pratt Street. Yeah, it's right across from the Convention Center and Raven Stadium and the Orioles Stadium and all of that is right over here. And they are known for their crab cakes. Oh my so God. So we are about, you put some lemon on there. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm. And we are about, he's, I haven't had these in years. And it's a Tim was actually here the before. The most incredible incredible crab cakes I've ever eaten in my life. So and I want to see what his reaction is when he, what the hell he puts in his mouth. Mm, and it comes with a side too, anything yes. you want. So let me just get my, my fork. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm ready. Oh, I'm, you're, you're... I'm got my fork, I'm ready to dig in. You had it already from the beginning. Okay, here we go. <laughs> okay, all, right. all set? Yes, I am. I got a nice piece okay. of crab. Oh, little... mm. And here we go. Oh my oh god. My god. Mm. Mm. Is this heaven or what? Oh my god, the crab is incredible. This is the most amazing crab cakes I have ever tasted in my oh life. Oh my god, the texture Insane. is delicious. Mm. It is. It's not like that crumbly stuff you buy in the store or anything. Every oh my god. piece, there's a giant piece of crab in it. And it is so delicious. I'm not even kidding. When they say lump crab, there mm. is a lot of lump. Mm. Mm. Delicious. I don't want to eat it fast. Mm. So that mm. is what the hell we put in our mouth. Mm. And I do it over again. Mm. <laughs> our guest has been singing since she was a child. And uh, today she is known to the world as not just a songwriter, but a powerhouse singer as both a recording artist and a live performer. She was recently named Community Musician, Musician of the Year by Elephant Talk Indie. Yes! Ah, exciting, right? And not only is she selling out venues on her own around the world, she has opened for some major acts like the Jonas Brothers, Hall & Oates, uh, the Spin Doctors, among many, many others. Today, we will dish about her new EP and her hit single, Time Thief. We are thrilled to welcome the fabulous Laura Cheadle. Yay! <laughs> what an intro. I love it. Oh my God. Have you seen yourself? You're gorgeous. You are. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no. <laughs> How are you doing? No, oh, I'm, I think I'm, you know, I'm living the dream. You know, I'm having such a great time. I, I, everything, I feel like I manifested everything this year. Wonderful it's all to fruition. It's like insane. And there's like some things I'm going to tell you today that I have told no one yet. Oh, so we sweet. have a premiere on our hands. <laughs> <laughs> but I love, I love so excited. So excited. 
the the fact that you were saying you manifested this this year and again a lot of time it takes time but again if you keep your eye on the ball it all comes together and i'm so happy it's coming together for you Yay! <laughs> Yeah, if we can, I want to start from the beginning, not too far in the beginning, but I know you started singing from what I was, was reading at four years old. Yes. I came out of the womb pretty much. My dad is a Philadelphia legend. I mean, he's voice to men. He's been on everything. Teddy Pendergrass. I mean, Stevie Wonder, everyone oh, you can imagine he's written for, he's performed with. Wow. So I grew up with famous people in my basement. And it's not like I was forced into music, like a lot of people ask. Absolutely not. I took it upon myself to start writing my own songs when I was a teenager. And um, wow. it manifested into, you know, a beautiful, beautiful thing. And it's so much fun being a musician. It's just yeah. a blast. It's always something different. I hate the same anatomy. So, yeah, it's always something different. <laughs> Yes, well, I'm a singer myself, and I love the sound of your voice. Oh my God! Thank you. Just and the soul you've just got—it goes down to your soul. I love that. And yeah. we—I was telling Ike um, earlier. I said I we we got to talk about collaborating because I would love to wail yes. in the song. Just get into a, a blues with you. Oh my God! Yes, baby. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah, I'm I'm completely big. I am so obsessed with female singers, and I think it's because of the, their range. You know, they go mm -hmm. whisper, they can belt, they can go low, they can just yeah. do it all. I mean, it's it's you know, it's like funny because I've been working at it for a long time, and now I hit these like insane notes, and people are like, "What the hell is going on?" <laughs> like, it, it kind of came out Look. like. That, the more I became myself, the more my mute, my singing grew, which I totally believe. Well, I, the, that's what I love when I watch your live performances. And we yeah. have to come out and see you because I live oh, in New Jersey. Yes, so have to. It has to happen. And I was watching your performances. And when you're just up there and you belt out those notes, they're just so natural. I'm like, what a gift you have. You really do. I don't feel like it's me. I feel like it's something from beyond, mm -hmm. to be honest. Like I go into like a, I don't even yeah. know. It doesn't feel like me though. And it's, it's a beautiful gift and I, I really take care of it and yeah. mm -hmm. you're my gift. Yeah. Excellent. Well, you mentioned Philadelphia <laughs> earlier. Is that where you grew up? I grew up in South Jersey, Jersey girl all day long. Uh -huh. I'm currently living in Philadelphia, but yes, I am a born what, and raised what, Jersey girl. What, what part of Jersey? Uh, South Jersey, Swedesboro. Have you heard of it? Oh, okay. I was born. I, well, I was raised in Bricktown, New Jersey, near Point Pleasant. Oh, you're central. You're central. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Close. <laughs> yeah, north, <laughs> north and south are totally different worlds. I mean, I yeah. live in oh, 100%. Also, but totally different worlds. <laughs> so, who were who were some of your inspirations growing up? Well, I love everything my dad loved. I love so I'm an old soul. Stevie Wonder, obviously. Oh, like, yeah. Franklin, people way before my time. But I love John Mayer. I love Jason Mraz. I love uh -huh. I love real singer songwriters. Yes. Um, I really fall in love when people are writing their own music and mm -hmm. sharing what's really happened in yes. their life. More than yes. having writers. And no disrespect to that. That's amazing, too. But for me personally, I love hearing what they're actually feeling and singing yeah. about something i love because there because there really is when yeah. someone writes their own song yeah a connection unlike anybody else yeah i'm an old soul i love bunny raid you know i love yes. stuff my parents oh. and beyond even their parents love you know i'm, I'm into like ella fitzgerald and Billy yeah. Holiday. i love uh -huh. oh wow wow you've got yeah you've well, been exposed and to i love your, your take on the wonder because I've seen a performance you did on Stevie Wonder, like a um, a, a cover that you done on him. Yeah, amazing. amazing! Your voice is just like I, Tim and I were watching when we were traveling with our show, and it was just so flawless. Thank you. It's it. I love that song first of all, and it's just you know it's me, and I love so, I love making yeah. a song different enough, but you also know the song. You know, you, yeah. I don't like. I'm not a cover singer in any way because I can never sing exactly like the artist. And I think that's what I like about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so um, what is your approach to a song? Now, do you do you do only your own songs? 
I do covers, but it's more like what you saw the Stevie. I make them my own. So they sound yeah. Yeah. pretty different than the actual, but you're like, oh my God. But I write everything. I co-write with my dad as well. I co-write with various, you know, other people. But I write mostly all my own, and um, it's whatever I'm feeling. I don't stick to one genre either. You know, I have a blues right. album. I have a funk album. Times yeah. equals a and pop awesome. album, which has almost a million streams, which is blowing my mind. <laughs> uh, I hate doing the same thing. I have so many different moods. Oh, yeah. Fun. Uh huh. And also and what different stories to tell. Mm -hmm. So and, and things that you're going through and experiencing, which are again, one time it might be blues, and yes. another time it might be a more pop, and yeah, exactly. I love and all it, genres. I'm like really into so much different things. So uh -huh. and, and that's what shows a true singer. You could do anything. You could mm -hmm. tackle anything you want. And another one of my favorite things is your Christmas music. Yeah, because I love the holiday season. That's and my and biggest. Here power. comes Santa Claus. Crazy. It's my uh, biggest problem. It's so bluesy. Album. Yeah. <laughs> you can get away and with doing And you've done original yeah. songs too. Yeah. You can do mm -hmm. anything you want for a Christmas album. Yeah. Yeah. Tell <laughs> us about tell us about your, your original Christmas songs. Oh, there's so many. Uh last year I released um mm -hmm. a song called On This Christmas Night, which did yes. really well. Um that was yeah. a pop Christmas yeah. song. But my favorite one is yeah. called Giving You Me for Christmas. Yes. Oh, I love that. That's like a sexy, like wrapping yourself under the tree. I still think yeah. that's going to be on the radio everywhere. Um, I'm going to keep pushing that every year. Good. Funny, I wrote that with my father, believe it or not. That song. <laughs> uh, but it's I love my favorite Christmas song is Santa Baby of all time. So oh, yeah. I, yes. I want to do like my take yes. on a sexy Christmas song. Uh huh. Yeah. So now and you and your father Christmas and life I love as well. Yeah, mm. I write with my dad a lot. Um, I also write, I write a lot of my own, and uh, it's just you know I'm not a very I'm not a technical person at all. I'm a Pisces. I'm a dreamer. I'm a uh -huh. terrible in math, so I'm not a technical. I wake up from dreams like Time Thief. I woke up with that song in my head from a dream. Um, yeah, it just comes to me, like I let it just flow from the universe. Uh huh. Excellent. Excellent. Do you have like a process when writing a song or is it like sometimes like the, the hook might get stuck in there and then you expand on that or is it different every time? Every time is different. Time Thief, I woke up with those words in my head. Time okay. Thief. Because I was with someone for many years that was not right for me. So I woke up with that in my head called Time Thief and I was like, everyone can relate to this. Absolutely. I was like, oh, you yeah. with time with somebody that you know from the very beginning, thinking back, like the first date, you're like, what? No, but you kind of, right. like, oh, I guess I have to be. Now that I'm happy and with the right person, it's like, duh. <laughs> it takes time to appreciate. You know? But what a great title. I mean, Time Thief. Yes. That says it all right there. That's so yes. cool. I think that's why people are like downloading and listening on Spotify because yes. it's something that universal yeah yeah absolutely we've all been there oh yeah <laughs> and, and we, we can expect new music too now the time thief is released it's out yes. can you tell us a little bit about the ep because i've been watching your instagram and i'm so excited yes. for the, the EP. so i recently signed with so bold entertainment and uh, sony music sony orchard so it's out of sony music and the ep is going to be released under sony and it's i've been writing since covid 2020 so i have so many songs i went from there's so many emotions on this ep and it's mm -hmm. literally three years of writing so wow it's amazing and uh it should be this fall they're like don't tell them the exact date but it's gonna be an amazing it's called mannequin so that's the album name nice oh my god i am just so, excited. I'm so proud of you <laughs> yeah. yep, you're amazing. just you're like my little sister i'm just i'm so proud of you <laughs> I love you. I'm taking We're kind of the same age, Laura. I'm just going to pretend. <laughs> we are. Yeah. What is age anyway? Who cares? Yeah, right. Exactly. I agree. So let me ask you a question now. With the music business changing so much, mm. do you find it's it's harder to get music out there? Well, now that you're you're signed with Sony, maybe a little prior to that, the COVID and everything happening. I think it's um, 
the internet is amazing because you can just do whatever you want, basically. Mm -hmm. When I signed with Sony and so bold entertainment is my label. Um, they let me do whatever the heck I want. So oh, nice. uh, I don't, I'm not good at being controlled. I'm an Aquarius rising. I don't know if you guys know about Zodiac, but yeah. I'm, uh -huh. very, yeah. I'm birthday February 20th. So I'm like right on the cusp of Aquarius. You can't tell me what to do. So yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm like, no, you know, it's like music, music is so personal for me and, and I wouldn't want to just sing anything. And I believe me, I've had the chance to sing crappy songs and you know get one hit from labels and i've just always stuck to my guns because i just do it because i love it yeah There's not, i don't do it just for money or for this or that and yeah it's, it's fun it's really who i am yeah absolutely and then also i mean being exposed to like you were saying you grew up with like stars in the house and and uh, yeah. So much fun looking at them. Like, that's what I like. I want to live a life like that. Right? Yeah. I'm like, oh, my God. Like, I'm not someone that could have a day job. Heck no. I couldn't do that. I know. No way. I know. They'd fire I me. Get it. <laughs> but I imagine you probably absorbed these things. And also working with, like, the Jonas Brothers and Hall and yeah. Oates. And did you learn things? You know, you seem like you're open to learning the process or learning. Yeah. Uh -huh. a lot. What are some of the things you've learned? I, I mean, Jonas Brothers, they were kind of manufactured, but they're awesome yeah. people, you know, but their dad was their manager and he kicked butt, but mm -hmm. and they're killing it now. I mean, yeah, they yeah. had, they had a strategy, right? Um, yeah. I always knew I was like an older soul and I didn't want to mm -hmm. do like yeah. poppy, poppy music. I want to, mm -hmm. I want to appeal to all ages and, you know, yeah. like that. but I don't know. I never thought about in the strategy, like has to appeal to this group. Uh-huh. I also don't, I've never sold my soul to the devil either. So yeah, but <laughs> well, that, then that explains why, why you probably never tried out for the voice or American Idol or anything like that. Right. Yeah. I've been offered, yeah. but no, I don't want to do uh -huh. that. Yeah. Nothing against it. Like I said, it's not very me though. Yeah. I, yeah. I hear you. I hear you. Um, but the, the, um, the industry, has has just shifted so much and so much of it right now because it just drives me crazy is talent is lacking in a lot and you know how many instagram followers or something is you know it, it has to do with your image and how you look and they'll package you and have to do a hell of a lot of auto tuning you know yeah. <laughs> on yeah. some of these people i don't know i don't know <laughs> I but mean, I'm not what, I'm not sure how the industry got to this place. But I'm wondering how long it's gonna last. Like I saw John Mayer right. this past Saturday. I brought him up again, but I saw him live again and I was like, that's real. I think that's an actual talent. And then he's uh, yeah. I don't know, he's like what 45 now? He's like killing yeah. it. Like because I feel like it's real talent. I don't right. know if the manufactured ones are gonna stand the test of time. I agree. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm like, well, I mean, I grew up like with Streisand and, you know, mm -hmm. all the great pop singers like Olivia Newton-John and Frank Sinatra. We love those singers. And that's kind of lacking on the charts now. It's like these, mm -hmm. like you said, manufactured Britney Spears and Selena Gomez. And there's no big belters anymore. And yeah. you're the exception. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm ready. Get me out there. Yeah. So do you have do you have like a favorite I don't know how to ask or what I'm searching for. Do you have like a favorite uh style or type or uh you know like when you're holding that long note and and do you have any moments like that that you just like relish and just kind of get lost in? I love, you know, I do love blues for that reason because I can uh -huh. But I hate being labeled blues because that's not what I do. Yeah. I, you know, I'm like more of like a pop R and B. Mm -hmm. But there's this, I do a version of Stormy Monday. It's on my it's oh. on my Instagram. Yes. And that's one of my favorite to perform. Yes. Um because it's it's deep mm -hmm. soul. Like I went on a blues tour when I like 10 years ago. I was really, really young then. And, wow. and I just met all these blues singers and they were oh. like telling me all these things i just took off by myself and just went across the country oh my god i love you <laughs> and i just went i was like crazy i was like 20 years old like a nut job just like going everywhere and i was like meeting all these blues singers and they were telling me things 
like there's a hole in your soul if you don't sing with it. And I learned a lot, uh -huh. but at the same time, I'm not a just a blues singer. And people love to put right. an article right. blues singer, yeah, a jazz singer. I'm like, I'm not a jazz singer at all. Uh huh. It, yeah. People need to have that little label, you know. People right. love labels. Yeah. Uh huh. But that. But it, but it's nice. But it's nice to know because you could do anything. So if you're jazz here, you're pop there, you're oh R and B God. here. What a yeah. great way to, to be shown, you know. A, a crossover, yeah, definitely right. crossover. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, I'm I I similar in that regard that I I I just don't understand how people get stuck in one genre or one thing because there's so many very various wonderful sounds out there, you know. How are you not evolving? Like I love to evolve mm -hmm. as a being, and I feel yep. like that's if you're staying in the same thing, you're not really evolving as a person. So mm -hmm. that's what I think. I like artists that you see over time have evolved and done different things. Mm -hmm. So what live performing uh, uh, for us, it's thrilling, you know, yeah. and for you, you know, Tim's a singer as well. I'm a comedian, but when you get on stage, it's such a rush. Now it must be versus recording. It, it must yeah. be a whole different world, right? For you. I love it. You put it all out there. I mean, yeah. I put my whole soul on that stage. You know, it's yeah. like, oh, yeah. it's my favorite thing in the world. Yeah. Know? And I like, you know, it's fun being picky now and where I want to perform and what I want to do. I'm at that yeah. point where I'm like, people are coming to me. Here you go. <laughs> yeah. I don't play these shitholes anymore. It's like wonderful. It's like, yeah. <laughs> oh. people have character. You know, they build your character. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I'm sure being... the camaraderie you have to with the band. I'm sorry, there's a delay. There's a the band and working with the band too, and doing all these different twists on the songs that you you normally do must be exciting too. Oh yeah, I mean the new music I've been working on with them. It's so fun to just bring new things in, and get excited about new music. It's fun. It's like mm -hmm. I wrote so much over the past three years. It's like crazy and my life has changed so much like like spiritually so yeah. it's beautiful now uh, would you say that you've emerged from the pandemic uh more spiritual or different absolutely mm -hmm. i mean i you know in that time found the love of my life after leaving a terrible relationship time thief was about um you know just becoming a better person Mm -hmm. even better person. And, and, you know, it humbled you, uh, COVID. I learned how to, it kind of relaxed me though. It's like, I didn't have to be doing this, have to be doing right. that. I did so many live performances on here, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> that was yeah. crazy to figure out by myself, you know, but it was, it was a wild time. Mm -hmm. that, but, that, but that was challenging, especially as a comedian too, because when I'm doing my stuff on zoom, and you're muting everybody, you're doing your jokes mm -hmm. and you don't hear anybody laughing. You're like, oh my God, I'm bombing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, what's, what, so what's your excuse when you're live? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm trying to make you look good. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I know, but I know what you mean. Like the applause, the, you know, and thank God we're, we've emerged and we're back and we can, we get that. Because there's yeah. nothing like that engagement with an audience. Yes, I talk to the audience. I'm like, you know, yeah. kind of, I'm real crazy. You have to see me live. I feel like you don't know me until you see me live. I'm like, uh -huh. a comedian, I'm a comedian slash performer. I go into this whole, I pick on people in the audience. Oh, I love it. It's a whole interactive experience. So it's like, <laughs> you know, it's way different than what you just see on Instagram. Uh -huh. oh, yeah. yeah. And well, that's now, where I'm looking forward to. So far in your life and your career, what would you say that you are the most proud of so far? I I think just sticking to my myself, doing mm -hmm. everything, you know, how I want to do it. And I've played some incredible, incredible venues. I don't even know. Like, it's insane the amount of things I've done. Like, sometimes you have to, like, remind yourself. I think just honestly, the answer is, like, sticking to myself. Yeah. yeah. Words are great and the TV stuff and this, but like not changing for someone else is probably right. the best because so many people do. I refuse. Yes, right, right. And yes. now let's, let's talk about the awards you've won. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's incredible. I mean, 
not the fact that you know you're taking away from you sticking to yourself because that's the biggest award you could give yourself right you stick to yourself but the awards they really do mean something when you do receive them because yes. it's everybody accepting and right yeah i mean musician of the decade was my favorite one yeah. they're actually awards are next to me right now i, I keep them humbled over here um <laughs> but um yeah i mean i don't i don't ever expect anything and i think that's the best thing to do i mean yeah. I'm really, i stay really because i feel like you know every day is amazing mm -hmm. Obviously, every day yeah. isn't but you know every day that you can do what you want to do is pretty awesome absolutely absolutely 100 oh, yeah. so if you can tell everybody out there where they can find you mm -hmm. And then about your tour dates, because I would love to know what you have coming up, because Tim and I have to sneak out. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. where can we catch you? <laughs> LauraCheadle.com. You can find everything. I'm big Instagram at LauraCheadle Music. Um, let's see. You know, I should look at my own calendar here because I have a lot coming up. Good. And oh. I will tell you about something really big coming up in a second. Uh, breaking news. Breaking news. But here's the shows. <laughs> Uh, obviously, Elephant Talk Music Festival is um, October 14th. Yes. Um, that's in Atlantic City. Um, Blue Moon Theater is in November 18th, which I highly suggest you come to. It's a theater in New Jersey. Oh. Woodstown, New Jersey. That oh. is one of my favorite theaters to play. It's November 18th. Um, if I, I suggest it to everyone. That's the place to see me. I mean, it's Wait. amazing. Um, I have more coming through but right now um jamie's house of music we do a very cheetle christmas show um, oh, December wow. 16th in lansdowne pennsylvania it's also those two venues are my favorite to play but i'm also booking west coast now Sweet. and if you guys turn on cbs right now you're going to see previews of me i can't confirm or deny what the show is but it premieres tomorrow. Uh -huh. Actually, no, this isn't airing tomorrow. It premieres October 13th. I'm not on that episode, but the show airs October 13th. Uh -huh. And uh, I will be on this show on CBS. I will. I am going to check in. I remember back in the day, we said the TV got, I used to live through that thing. But you just turn it on right now. If you have CBS, just keep it on. You're going to see me come up on the preview. I've had many people write to me so far. I'm like, I'm surprised not everyone is like, what the heck is going on? No, oh my that, God. Are, are you acting? No, I am myself. It's more oh. reality. Sing. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Well, I've got, I've got CBS on over here. No, no, so right now. It has, it has aired on. like 20 times today. I'm like, there I am. Uh, <laughs> someone's resume is really exploding over there. Yeah. <laughs> It's funny, that, like if I'm allowed to post the promo and and but say I can confirm or deny. I will post the promo closer uh -huh. to my air date, but um, yeah. it's kind of funny how it has to be set up. But you can see me. Oh, that's oh, so cool! So happy for you. That's amazing. <laughs> Before we conclude, we like to play a little game, Laura. Oh, I'm ready. It's called "What Is Laura Thinking?" Yes. And Tim is going to explain it while I get some paper. Okay, so I can I have some paper and a pen. Okay. And we'll ask he'll he'll ask a question like a practice one is hot or cold. Do you prefer it hot or cold? And then don't okay. say it and we'll write it down and then we'll see if we match. So Okay, perfect. Why don't we do hot or cold? Okay, just one second. Okay. Okay, I'm ready. Okay, go ahead. Cold. You answer now, Laura. Really cold? I had hot. Well, it depends. This is a really weird question for me because I like fall weather. I hate to be too yes. hot, but I also hate being overheated. Uh -huh. So I, I die when I'm overheated. Yes. So it has to be cold. I like literally have yeah, a heart I'm, attack. I'm a right. cold person myself. Definitely. Yeah. Okay, yeah. go ahead. Yeah, me too. So Okay, so <laughs> now Tim usually wins this game. So. Laura, I need you to help okay. me out here. Right. All right. Pink or Kelly Clarkson? Don't answer. Wow. Wow. Ooh, it's a hard one. It's a hard one. Yes, it is. You got it? Kelly yep. Clarkson. 
I had Pink. Pink is from, you know, Doyle's Town. However, Kelly Clarkson. Yeah. I, I love that album she came out with where she could finally, like, do her music that she loved. I forget what the hell it was called. Uh, it was, like, uh, uh, I was like, yeah. The, the second album, I think it was, right? Or the third? Which, I don't know. It was like. My December, was it? It was, like, recent. I, like, I don't even know what it was called. Oh, it was like, oh Big Hand Woman. It was like a. Mm-hmm. It was like a blues album. I loved it. But I do like Pink, too. But I think Kelly. Yeah, uh-huh. I do, too. Pink's amazing. Yep. Okay. One. Zero. All right. Uh, now. Uh, uh, <laughs> the tide is turning. Ready? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Large venue to perform in or an intimate venue to perform in? Ooh. Wow. Wow. Mm. Oh, I'm going to go wow. with my gut on this one. This is really hard because I'm like really tied. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna go with intimate. I had large. Oh, oh my god! Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I like talking to the crowd, but I do love big venues, so I could like. Uh uh-huh. But I'm a big. I talk to the, everybody. In the the reaction. Yeah. Okay. Uh oh. East coast or west coast. <laughs> Yeah, I think that one might be easy now. I don't know. All right, go ahead. West Coast, even though I'm from here. I am. Oh! <laughs> I love how open West Coast is. I, uh-huh. I, love, I definitely want to live there. Um, everyone is just more free spirited, like my personality. Uh-huh. I love the East Coast. Don't kill yeah. me, people. <laughs> But it's, it's, it's just, you know, California is like, you know, you tell them you're gay and they're like, oh, like, duh. Like, yeah. Here it's like you have to like hide yourself. It's just a whole yes. different vibe. Right. And the final one, this could, this could cause a tie because right now it's two to one. Even though we answered this before, winter vacation or a summer vacation. Hmm. Oh, I think I'm kind of mad that I just put that down. All right. Each, but go ahead. You ready? Summer. Yeah. Okay. I had winter. Yeah. Summer? Yeah. Okay. Oh. Perfect. Ike won. Sorry, Ted. I know. Laura, thank there. you. <laughs> right. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> Laura, thank you so much for being our guest. You oh, are incredible. I, I'm just we're I'm, so happy I, for everything that I, you have going on. Same here. I'm so happy for you, and I'm just so proud of you, just thank for you. the woman that yes. you're becoming and that or that you've become. And you're just just stay true to yourself and just keep at it. Keep keep doing what you do. It works. I'm yeah. doing it. I mean, <laughs> no one could stop me if they tried. <laughs> Let's take a nice picture. Right? <laughs> okay. okay. Got it. <laughs> you know, put that and also, little... too, if you hear people, if you hear two guys screaming in the audience in New Jersey, no, it's us. You better be there. <laughs> you, know, that's show. you better be at yes, one of those. I'm, I promise you, I we will definitely be there. We promise. One of them we yeah. will definitely come to. I'm excited. But Laura, this this is the part where we wave goodbye. Oh, thank you so much, Laura.